her talk on antigenetic alopecia analysis of transcriptome differences between bolding and non-bolding human dermal papillus cells. So, hello, good afternoon. I'll first like to thank uh, the organising committee for selecting my abstract for a short talk. So, um, what I'm going to talk about today is our group's effort into uh, elucidating the genetic causative factors behind endogenetic alopecia um, via the analysis of transcriptome differences between bolding and non-bolding human dermal papilla cells. So what we have in our study here is we have two dermapapilla cell lines derived by uh, Mike Philpott's group. Um, we have a non-bolding dermapapilla line that has been uh, derived from the occipital scalp, uh, mere occipital scalp, and a bolding dermapapilla cell line that has been derived from the frontal scalp. Um, both of these cell lines have been hitched to immortalized and are 2D cultured. I will touch on the morphological difference that we can see here later on in the talk. Uh, we found that uh, both of our body and non body DP cell line express DP markers as well as DP signature genes. So uh, both cell lines have been found to express versican well. And apart from that, uh, out of the 118 dermapapilla signature genes that have been defined by uh, Oyama's group, uh, we find that 115 of those genes are significantly expressed in both our cell lines, which is works out to roughly around like 95.8% of these genes. So we are quite confident to say that both our boarding and non boarding DPCs that we are working with uh, retain high levels of DP signature. So in order to find out which genes are differentially expressed between boarding and non boarding cells, um, we've treated them with either 1 nanomolar or 10 nanomolar of uh, DHT for up to 48 hours and then sampled for gene expression at 12 different time points um, using an Illumina bead chip following with which we identified differentially expressed genes um, which are in balding versus non-balding and then passed down the list of differentially expressed genes into those which were upregulated um, in balding versus non-balding and those which were downregulated in balding versus non-balding. Um, we then uh, put this list of genes to a gene ontology enrichment analysis to get a better idea of what genes we were actually looking at. So very firstly, when we first got expression data, we realized that there was an inherent gene expression difference uh, between non-boarding and boarding DPCs. So if you can see here from the zero hour treatment, meaning no DHT at all, um, you can see genes which are upregulated in the non-boarding are entirely downregulated in the boarding. Apart from that, we also observed DHT-dependent gene expression differences. So uh, with increased timing of uh, DHT treatment, you see genes which are slightly elevate, uh, uh, elevated in expression or decreased in expression. However, when we looked at the differentially expressed genes, uh, we found out that under both the 1 nanomolar and 10 nanomolar DHT treatment, we have approximately around 3,000 genes which were differentially expressed out of which we have 50% of those which were upregulated in balding versus non-balding and 50% of those which are actually downregulated in balding versus non-balding. We next looked at how well uh, the list of genes which were upregulated under the different DHG concentrations have actually overlapped and we found that there's quite a huge bulk of genes which actually overlap um, and the same goes for genes which were downregulated. So to continue our gene ontology and clustering analysis, we actually made use of the list of genes which were commonly um, either up or down regulated for that part of the analysis. So uh, what we found was that genes which were upregulated in balding DPCs as compared to non-balding DPCs, um, they were highly enriched in gene ontology groups that were related to cell cycle and mitosis, DNA replication, DNA repair, um, DNA modification, cell death, as well as ubiquitination, um, with uh, cell cycle mitosis being the most significantly enriched cluster here and ubiquitination being the uh, slightly less enriched cluster here. Um, whereas when we looked at the genes which were downregulated in the boarding DPCs as compared to non boarding DPCs, um, we found that uh, these genes were highly enriched in clusters that are related to vasculature, cell motion and cell migration, um, cell death, phosphate and phosphorus mechanism, uh, protein kinase, as well as cell adhesion and anchoring. So when we first saw um, these two categories popping up, 
um, which consists of the cell mi motion and cell migration as well as the cell adhesion and anchoring, we were not surprised at all because from the morphology of uh, the boarding versus non-boarding DPCs, we could already see that um, in contrast to the non-boarding cell line, the boarding cell line tends to grow in a non-monolinear fashion and it doesn't really uh, migrate well and spread well across the culture surface, which in turn uh, led us to think that there must be an inherent uh, lack of ability of the boarding cell lines from uh, migrating and adhering well. Uh, however, out of all these um, genotoxic clusters identified, we were most interested in that of vasculature which could be broken down into the child terms of um, vasculature development as well as blood vessel morphogenesis um, as this uh, actually points to the possible uh, hypothesis that balding DPCs have a reduced ability in fostering vascularization. And this, uh, and of note, this is in agreement with how uh, the postulated mechanism of minoxidil, uh, which was thought to actually um, help in alleviating the, the symptoms of AGA through fostering vascularization. Hence, in conclusion, uh, I have here presented a uh, immortalized 2D cultured balding and non balding DPC cell model um, that is suitable for AGA studies. And we have also found transcriptome differences between the balding and non balding DPCs, which are related to underlying biology behind AGA. So, lastly, I'd like to give my acknowledgements to my supervisor, Axel, as well as our fantastic informatics team that consists of Joanna and Ian, um, as well as uh, Mike and his group for. Uh, deriving the beautiful DP cell lines for us, as, uh, and lastly, my funding body for my scholarship, as well as my, uh, this project, which is uh, ASTAR in Singapore. So, thank you. Thank you very much for this very good presentation. Is there any question from the audience? In fact, I would like to hint that every of the, uh, this presentation started with Silke Regler, uh, Rod Singler and you also, they are on the poster and if you go later to the poster session you can discuss with the authors in front of the poster so uh, because we are a bit late of time we will continue. Oh, there's a question please. One question, if there's a question. Yes, a question would be good. <laughs> Always welcome. Very nice talk. Thank you. Um, I wonder if your original cells were both taken from the same person? Yeah, I was inspecting that question. Unfortunately, it isn't. However, um, we actually are deriving new cell lines from the same individuals and we will uh, try to see whether these results can be replicated in there. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you.